now. And so I just continually reference that one area, add something, reference that area again, add something else, and then just move around the entire painting in that way. And slowly, all of these areas start to take shape and, and fill in. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Really happy to have you here. I'm super excited today to share with you one of probably my favorite paintings I've ever made. Um, as usual, I'm going to take you through everything about this work, the why, the what, the how, my initial inspiration, my approach, uh, just the entire process, techniques, materials, etc. For this one, I want to anchor the conversation around two great questions I got from a couple of Instagram followers. So these two questions were asked about this particular painting, and I just thought they were great questions. So the two questions were, how do I take a reference photo and figure out how to paint it? You know, basically, how do I start a painting? How do I plan a painting um, when looking at a reference photo? And the second question, uh, what is one aspect of my work where I'm so confident that it just comes spontaneous while painting? And um, I don't know if I have one single answer for either one of these questions. So I'm going to continue to, you know, like I said, I'm going to go through the full process, but I'm going to come back to these two questions um, off and on throughout the entire video. Um, so hopefully in the end, I'll be able to answer both these questions as well as provide a ton of other useful tips for anyone who's interested in making a painting similar to to this one. So the first thing I'll say is when I look at a, any particular reference, I always start thinking uh, back to front. So I'm thinking about what's the furthest away because that's what I'm going to end up painting first. Um, and I just sort of see the photograph in layers. Um, the second thing I look at is the big shapes, right? So what are the big areas? Um, and even breaking down shapes within within shapes and we'll get more into that later on as we start to paint the teeth um, and then the third thing I think about um, is the colors like the overall colors and um, I just that's the way I sort of see the world now I don't always think about these things in that particular order but those are the three areas that I, I can simplify and say those are things that I always consider so in this case, um, you know, the first thing I see, obviously, is that this there's two major sections to this painting. There's the blue background, and then there's the teeth. And since I'm not going to be painting the background um, like a copy of what I see in the photograph, I'm actually going to treat this... I actually treat this one as almost two separate paintings. Um, because with this one, I want to actually use the background to tell a story. And so I'm going to treat it almost like an abstract area where very intuitive painting is going to happen, very much using my imagination and, and treating the background almost like an abstract painting versus the foreground where the teeth are. And that is a very much a painting where I'm going to be focused on referencing the photograph and trying to capture what I see. So I just want to pause here and have a snapshot of these colors that I, that I immediately thought of when I was looking at this uh, photo. So the background, I'm thinking teals and greens. Um, all of the teeth, basically, I see those as, uh, I just know that I can use burnt umber, raw umber, yellow ochre, um, quinacridone, nickel, um, and then some mixture of uh, black and white, essentially to capture every single color I need uh, for this piece of art. Uh, the next thing I wanted to do to, to truly start, once I got the background painted, just a nice even blue, I, I basically just want to separate those two areas, the, the big areas that I talked about, right? The background from the foreground. And so uh, I made a printout of these shark's teeth, and I'm going to use it to essentially isolate um, you know, this, this middle part of the painting and cover it uh, where the teeth are going to end up being so that I can focus on the background. Now, while I'm preparing this background, before we jump into it, I think it's a good point to just start with why am I even painting this painting in the first place. So this painting of shark's teeth is um, of a photograph that was taken by a friend of mine. He, you know, he and I went on this epic shark tooth adventure and found all these fossils. And he took a, a really great photograph of his finds and asked if I would paint them for him. And I was really inspired. As soon as I actually saw the photograph, I thought to myself, this would make a really cool painting. But because it was such a cool trip and we had such a great time over the course of like three days, like finding these fossils, I wanted to push it a little bit. You know, if you've watched some of my older videos, you know that I'm, I would say more traditionally an abstract painter. I don't really paint a lot of realistic uh, subject matter, at least I haven't until recently. And so I wanted to just 
add a little something extra. That's why I chose to take the background and kind of push it further and try to actually capture a bunch of different moments from our trip together in the background and kind of mix these two styles, right? Mix the abstract style with the realistic style. You know, the first part of this video, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm basically uh, trying to capture those moments, whether that be with text or with uh, simple, um, you know, intuitive drawings uh, that are like almost like sketches of different things that happened on the trip. And so this, you know, kind of leads into that second question about what are some things that I do that just feel so natural that I don't have to think, you know, I'm just basically, the painting is just happening. And so I would say this is that type of thing. Anytime I'm doing um, just drawing naturally, writing in my own handwriting, and that kind of effortless sort of free flowing painting is the kind of thing that happens when I do uh, f my faces series. So if, you know, these type of paintings here where I'm just basically um, s letting my subconscious, you know, lead and I'm just drawing very naturally without any reference at all and just letting it unfold. Um, so this entire background was kind of like that. You know, the, the goal of this wasn't to try to be to be perfect or be too careful. Um, I actually wanted it to be a little bit rough and primal and not not overly concern myself with trying to make it look too perfect. It's really more about just capturing the things that happen. I almost want it to feel like a little bit of a treasure hunt where you may not even notice the background until you get really close to it and then you start to see some of these words and some of these images. And again, it'll probably not really mean anything to the casual viewer, but it, it means a lot to the person that, you know, this painting is for. So I've already kind of finished the background. Now I'm moving on to the teeth. And what you've seen me do here is paint just in a simple brown background. And then I've used Sorol transfer paper to transfer the big shapes of the teeth um, onto the panel and now when I look at the the reference photo I'm like looking at those big shapes from a color perspective and I'm saying okay I see these big lighter areas um, and again I'm not trying to make the color match perfectly necessarily I'm just using the colors that I feel comfortable with that I know will have a really good effect and I'm just going in and plotting in those larger areas and once I get some of those bigger areas down then I come back with another layer and again I'm looking at the photograph and saying okay I see the big light area on this tooth I've laid it down now I start to see um, like some tone right some some rusty looking color and I say okay now I want to go back and, and nail that down and the same thing here it's like I'm going back and putting in a darker shape that I see and it's sort of working larger to smaller I guess is is the way I would define it so once I get the bigger shapes in, then it's just a series of um, different techniques of basically building up texture, uh, laying down some line work, uh, lighter and darker line work, as well as shadows. And so you'll see me, you know, in these in these clips, basically repeating those patterns. Um, as far as the texture part, that that's an area where I feel super confident when it comes to not really thinking. So I'm just painting. Uh, I'm not really trying to match the photograph, t uh, you know, too much when it comes to um, these these textural areas. I basically take different brushes that have, you know, uh, different bristles, some hard, some stiff, some soft, and just alternate laying down different textures. And um, I'm just trying to make it kind of capture a general feeling of what I'm seeing, I'm not trying to make it, you know, exactly like what's in the photograph. So it's really hard to say this is a step-by-step -step process. It's 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 really not. Um, it's basically um, a series of different techniques that I end up just repeating. So going for the big shapes first, going for the light areas and the dark areas and the big areas, and then slowly refining that down, adding more and more detail, and then just repeating that process over and over until everything is filled in. So back to this question about what is an area that you feel so confident with that the painting just comes spontaneously? I think that the more I paint, the more that just seems to happen, right? So it's not necessarily like there's a specific type of painting or an area or a time where I feel like that happens and it 
doesn't happen otherwise or and I think it has to do something also with the fact that acrylic paint is a safety net in a way right because I know I can always cover up what I'm painting I don't have to nail it like, like if I if I don't get it correct I'll just cover it up and paint over it as it dries because it's opaque medium for the most part and you know even if I'm doing glazing there's never a point of no return right I just I can always come back and try again so I think just with practice and time the more and more I paint the more I just generally feel comfortable and the work does feel spontaneous now I will say I've absolutely struggled with this in the past and there are times where I catch myself not feeling that way so it might be more interesting for me to look at uh, in the future, you know, as, as I'm making videos and you know, trying to find those moments where I'm feeling uptight or where something is not feeling like it's flowing. Yeah, like, like expand on that because it does happen. So I would say, like I said earlier, when I'm doing just true sketching or where I'm kind of experimenting and playing with like lines and geometric shapes and again, things that I think I feel comfortable with, uh, from a subject matter perspective, then um, generally speaking, I'm, I feel like I'm in a flow state and I don't really have to, it's definitely not forced. With these kind of paintings, it does, it flows as well, but I think it's more from a technique perspective, right? Like it's just applying paint in a way to try to achieve a texture or a feel. And again, because of the acrylic, I can just paint over it if I don't like where it's going. And so even with this, I feel like it feels very kind of spontaneous to me. At least in the moment, I just feel like I'm losing time, if that makes any sense, right? Where I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. I hope that answers that question to some degree. I do step back in these paintings often and look at what I'm doing and just try to get a sense of, uh, do I feel like it's, you know, capturing what I wanted? And with this one in particular, like I said in the other videos, I, I haven't really painted a whole lot of realistic stuff until the last few years. And I've kind of been more interested in the abstract stuff because of this discovery aspect of it, right? Um, this idea that you don't really know where it's going and it's more mysterious and there's there can be a lot of emotion and mystery in it. And um, it's interesting, right, to watch an abstract painting unfold. With realistic painting, you know, kind of you kind of know what the destination is to some degree. And it was just something that I wasn't super interested in up until the last few years. But I, I almost challenged myself to learn how to do it. And I think I'm still going through this process of using realistic painting as well as abstract painting together, uh, blending them in some way. I don't know if that's just to keep it interesting for me or if it's trying to push a boundary or, you know, try to find some kind of new expression, at least for myself. But when I take a step back in paintings like this, I can't help but feel super satisfied with what I'm seeing. And, you know, it's just, there's a thrill. There's a thrill of like, okay, all these techniques are coming together and I'm actually, you know, making an image that is striking and that I'm proud of and that almost surprises myself, right? And if you look at the photograph and you look at this painting next to each other, there's enough there that it looks like the same subject, but I've also pushed it and changed it, um, at least with color and with some of the techniques so that it feels like a piece of art uh, and not like a print or a copy. And so that's kind of exciting too. So I want to go back to that question about referencing a photo and how to break it down and where to start and all that. There's definitely a technique I use where I have to force myself to focus on very specific parts of the picture. Um, so like here's an instance where, you know, I can easily get overwhelmed by all the different pieces to this this painting right all the different teeth all the different textures all the different lighting the colors all that stuff can be overwhelming and so a lot of times what I'll do is I will focus uh, my painting sessions on a very targeted and specific part of the painting so in this instance this one tooth or one or two teeth right in this general area I try to make my my mind even though you see me jumping around from here to here these are like you know, 30 minutes at a time or 15, 20 minutes at a time. But whenever I isolate a section, I, I will try to focus just on that area for a while and um, not try to worry about completing the whole thing, but just saying, what do I recognize in the photograph that isn't present in the painting, right? What are some dark areas? What are some light areas? What are some pieces of, of maybe this one tooth that haven't been defined yet? And what would I need to, to, to define those, right? So 
Um, I might look and see there's some highlights or there's a tone that is a little too uh, flat all right, or not, it's not rich or saturated enough or maybe the shadows aren't dark enough or maybe there's mi a missing highlight like, like as you see now. And so I just continually reference that one area, add something, reference that area again, add something else and then just move around the entire painting in that way and slowly all of these areas start to take shape and, and fill in. So I just want to touch on a little bit of uh, paint consistency and I would say for most of this painting um, I'm painting wet on wet or you know I'm using like an acrylic retarder to slow the paint down a little bit to make it a little more mushy. Even with the shadows I, I, I thin those out a little bit not too much water, you know, just enough, right, to give it a little bit of a transparency and a little bit of like the slow dry gel or something like that to kind of just keep it from drying super, super fast. And like in these big areas here, you know, I'm using a couple different colors, maybe three different colors, um, and I want to blending them. I want to blend them together pretty quickly. And even even with the slow dry gel and stuff like that, it still dries super fast. And so, um, but I'm comfortable at this point working that way. You know, with an oil painting, I think this would be, you'd obviously be able to ach achieve the blending um, over a longer period of time and probably perfect it. But I, I don't really have the patience, to be honest. Uh, I, I really just feel good with, you know, the, the techniques that I've learned with acrylic paint and that, I've, that I'm still learning. You know, and you've probably seen the same pattern repeat over and over again um, at this point with the the big shapes and then the texture and then starting working smaller shapes and line, you know, uh, line work and then shadows and then toning and just repeating all of that over and over and over again until the details are there. And I've said this in other videos as well. I think it just takes practice and time, but for me, a big part of achieving a really good look and a really good painting is really just working it until it looks good and I I don't know how else to say that I've said it before I just I can tell it's like it's like this idea of how do you know when you're in love right um, it's kind of those things where you know it when you see it right um, you know for me I just I can look at something and and get a sense of is it there or not usually easier when it's not right I just know when it doesn't feel like it's quite right and with a painting like this too, I think with so many details, all the different parts come together to sort of support the whole image and the whole goal. So if I were to concentrate on just one specific tooth, I might find things that I don't necessarily like about it. And I do my best to just try to fix those and address those. But as I add more and more detail, the image sort of supports itself, if, if that makes sense. You know, there's certainly areas that got better and better as I worked on them meaning some teeth were just just you know better and more successful than others and there's but that's okay because it's like there was enough strong parts within the overall piece that it sort of pulls your eye around and maybe you don't necessarily notice or at least you know I didn't notice some of the weaker ones as much the more I added detail if that makes any sense at all so I want to say that I'll probably take these two questions and actually refer back to them in future videos because I think that um, the answers to those questions probably varies depending on the painting that you're doing and obviously the reference material that you're using. Uh, oftentimes in my paintings, I'll end up with more than one uh, piece of reference because there they might be a fantasy scene or some sort of a you know abstract surrealist landscape or something, and I may have a bunch of different photographs that I'm referencing or imagery. Uh, and so I think it's those are really interesting questions, and I think that um, they get me thinking. And so I'd like to continue to to refer back to them even in future videos, um, if that seems like something that you guys would be interested in. And as I'm continuing to just add these same, you know, techniques, you know, just building up depth, uh, hitting the big shapes, um, adding highlights and shadows and toning and all that stuff, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about just the recent success of the channel. I think it took me like maybe three or four years to get to a thousand subscribers but within the last month or so I've gained like well over a hundred new subscribers just in a very very short amount of time I want to say it was like 125 150 new subscribers in the last like three to four weeks you know I'm really appreciative to everyone who's subscribed um, both from years and years ago as well as the folks that have just joined on and I always uh, ask you know for people especially new folks that are watching 
what's working for you? What's resonating with you? What can I do better, right? Like what kind of questions do you have that I can do a better job of answering or maybe answer for the first time? I have a ton of content as far as uh, footage of paintings that I've done in the last three to four years that I haven't even edited. I'm not sure if I'll even get to all of it at this point. There's just, there's so many paintings that I've done that I haven't, I haven't even sorted through like what's worth sharing, what, you know, what, what I think you guys would want to see. Um, so I'm just going to continue to ch kind of cherry pick from the footage that I have and try to put stories and techniques and tips and whatever around those. But I'm always interested in the comments, you know, uh, any new thoughts, any new ideas or any, any, even older stuff, whatever. It doesn't matter if there was something I tried to answer and didn't do, really do a great job of, or I can expand on it. Uh, please, you know, hit me up in the comments and let me know. So specifically with what I'm working on right here, um, I'm just going back and cleaning up edges. You know, at this point, it's just like dropping in some shadows, building up some depth, um, just trying to finish the painting off. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where I could work on this thing forever. I literally could just continue to paint over and over and over. And so, you know, you have to get to a point where you have a little bit of a discerning eye and you say, okay, what's really important, like what really seems to still need work versus what's good enough. That's something that I think I also just get better with and have gotten better with over time. So if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate you. You know, if you'd like to support me in some small way, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, visiting my affiliate links. Um, if you're up for or interested in a print of this piece, they are available on my website as well. Uh, links will be in the description. You can check that out. So just wrapping this up, you know, I think that I'm super happy with how this painting turned out. Um, I, I don't know how many hours it took me to, you know, people always want to know how long something takes. Um, maybe 50 hours total. Um, hard to say. Um, but I don't really think about that too much anymore, right? I just, I get lost in these paintings and I feel like I just work on them until they're finished. Um, in this case, um, wasn't really concerned about the time because this is a painting that was going to be a gift to a friend. It's really also just a learning exercise for me, right? I want to put whatever time is necessary into this so that I get something back out of it, right? Like not only just a great image, um, but I learned something. And, you know, I will say that the more and more I do these kind of things and learn these new techniques or sort of hone these techniques, then the faster it gets the next time I make a painting. So you might have seen some of my other paintings where I was painting gold bugs. It's a very similar process to painting shiny teeth like this, right? Just different colors and different subjects. So, you know, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. You enjoy this content. You you like this painting. Um, I'm super thrilled again with the way it turned out. And I'm not sure exactly where I will go next with this type of subject matter, but I can I can almost guarantee that I will do more more paintings like these. You know, the the end result was uh, a really, really nice gift. My friend Mark, who I gave this to, was uh, thrilled with the piece. And I couldn't be happier uh, to have given him this thing to sort of commemorate our, our adventure together. And uh, for anyone who's stuck around this far, um, I always uh, cover my acrylic paintings with an isolation coat, which is just a clear acrylic coat that kind of separates the painting from the varnish, which I'm going to add next. Um, and in this case, I did a gloss varnish because I wanted the teeth to feel wet and, you know, also just enriches the colors. It makes, makes the colors pop. So thanks again. Appreciate everybody, um, for being, being with me and supporting me and, uh, coming along for this, this art journey. And I wish you all the best. I hope your paintings turn out amazing and that you learn something from this. Here we go. Last little images showing, uh, the original reference material with the painting on the right. Um, again, super happy with how it turned out. Appreciate y'all. Let me know what you think. Um, your support and your comments uh, means more than you know. Thanks. Peace.